just meditation, like breathing is great for calming yourself down. Breathing is like, essentially meditation is controlling your breath. Slowing your breath down, slowing your heart rate down, and getting out of like the, the fight side and into the flight relaxation side. But the other huge benefit of it is it gets your rib cage and your back stacked in the right position. So if you think about like when you're stressed, you go, you get these really big chest breaths and you come into this extended position here. So now your diaphragm here is shooting up this way, your pelvic floor is shooting down, and your back's in this really shitty position. Learning how to breathe correctly and control your breaths will reset and realign your pelvis and ribcage. It's like an instant mobility improvement. It will calm you down very quickly, and it will increase sport, uh, performance from a sporting perspective too. And um, we'll do a video on that separately, but um, just breathing is like super crucial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so using um, daily breathing routines in order to manage your stress and anxiety, guys, will not only help you in the gym, not only help you succeed, but it will it'll help relationships, it will help productivity, efficiency. The idea should not be poo-pooed. It is incredibly powerful. Two to five minutes. Just down on the Headspace app. It's free for the first, um, the first few weeks, okay. I believe. Ten days. In ten days, awesome. Do you do it? No, one of our friends works there. Yeah, so it's free for the first ten days, but I think the first meditation is about two minutes. It's completely manageable, but it can just open your eyes to how powerful this stuff is. The guy that does it, Andy, is totally awesome, so accessible and relatable. Um, okay, so if you guys are starting your start point, let's say you wanted to be able to squash 200 kilos, you guys are at 150 kilos right now, you've named what the day... James is going mad for the selfies over there. I haven't done one yet! <laughs> <laughs> you've named what your starting point is. Right now, on the 13th of May, I can squash 150 kilos. My goal in the next eight months is to be able to squash 200 kilos. My milestones are going to be 160, 180, 190, then 200. I understand that on a daily basis, what I need to do to support that success is sleeping seven to eight hours, good quality sleep, not just lying in bed, actually sleeping. So you might need to go to bed and earlier to support your wind down process. You'll need to be preparing your meals on a weekly basis and focusing in on three to four good quality meals. You will need to manage your stress. Another really good habit is just getting off the bus stop two or three stops earlier and actually walking to work a little bit. I'm not saying that you guys pack it in all together, I'm just saying take those 10 or 15 minutes out before your day starts and just relax and breathe. Um, does anyone else do anything here habit wise that you guys could share? Drinking two liters of water a day, <coughs> packing your own snacks. How many of you guys will book by lots and just end of it like portion them out? awesome habit to develop. You're welcome. Just buy big bags of nuts and then portion oh, them out into like 30 grams or 50 grams yeah. and just carry them around in your bag. Like, yeah. So much yeah. easier. How many of you guys have social media apps on your phone? We all do. But again, we get into the habit of checking our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter all of the time. So we get into the habit of checking our social media status all of the time. Can you imagine? Yeah. Um, there was a great podcast on the Tim Ferriss experience last week with the 30th employee of Facebook, a guy called Noah Kennedy. But um, one of the things he said was like, you open up your phone, you open up your computer, and you have FA enter his before you've even thought, and it's all of a sudden Facebook's in front of you. Yeah. And you start reading the news feed, and you start going, oh, look, this happened, and then yeah. 45 minutes later, you're sick because somebody just got a new car and a new job, and <coughs> look at their awesome life, and look how shit yours is. Okay, you only see the good stuff on Facebook, but there's a really good thing called Facebook News Feed Eradicator. You can get it, and um, it's an app or an extension for Google Chrome that'll just block it on your, on your page. So it'll block your news feed, so you won't see what other people are doing. So it kind of takes away more your perspective of Facebook, which is why you have it. Yeah. But if you want to keep it um, and still interact with people through messaging and stuff on it, you can keep Facebook without having to look at the news feed by downloading the Facebook news feed. Right there. And just a, a little note on what James already referenced in terms of the willpower. Willpower is just doing something that you don't want to do anyway. I would challenge James on that concept. I think willpower is just something that you need to prepare for. We think willpower is something that happens straight away. 
oh, but I don't feel like going to the gym now if I'm not going to, I don't have the willpower. No, willpower is something that you need to prepare for. So if you are planning on going to the gym three times a week next week, you sit down right now and you plan for that. That is using your willpower. Willpower is preparation, willpower is scheduling. So please don't think that just because you don't want to do it right now, you have no willpower. We need to plan for willpower. Willpower is like a muscle. We have loads of it, we need to do loads of planning because it's not always gonna be 100%. And when we're looking at our habits, the daily tasks that we want to create, if you guys have loads of willpower to come up with what those tasks are, then do it. But the idea is to be able to do as much as possible subconsciously so our brain can focus on something else. Okay? So does that make sense to everyone? So this template here, I'll get James to send that around as part of whatever package he's going to give you guys. But basically what you need to be able to do is set your starting point at least two to three milestones. If you guys have a really, really big goal that you're working towards that's going to take you longer than six months, you need these milestones because it's just going to get so boring. You're going to be chasing something that seems and feels unrealistic. If your goal is a 200 kilo squat and right now you're sitting at 150, if you're constantly chasing 200, you're going to become disillusioned and disheartened because the progress, the comparative progress that you make will be minimal. But if you've broken that down and you've decided, well, by this, this time three months, I'm going to squat 160 kilos, that's a lot more manageable. That's a lot more empowering because you can actually see yourself take steps in that direction. So the milestones are crazy important, especially when it comes to weight loss. So if you guys have a weight loss goal in mind, please break that down into manageable pieces. Literally the only way you can eat an elephant is one bite at a time. You guys need to say that to yourself over and over and over again. So if there's a weight loss goal for 10 pounds, Focus on three pounds, and when you guys lose three pounds, do something to take stock of that accomplishment. Because losing three pounds, three pounds that won't ever come back, is a really, really amazing accomplishment, and you deserve to acknowledge that. You've worked hard, why wouldn't you? If you gained a pound, you'd beat yourself up. But yet, when you lose three, nothing happens. So, sorry. <laughs> the thing oh, sorry. What? Okay, so this is really key. So when you guys are making your goals, I want you to take this template and apply it to the same framework. It doesn't matter how small or how big your goal is. If you guys are serious about success, this is what needs to happen. In what way would you celebrate it? Like, obviously you can't go out and buy yourself something all the time. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, they would have a word so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you practice or have you heard of the idea of self-care? Have any of you guys heard of the idea of self-care? So self-care is when we practice love and kindness towards ourselves. It's when we are, I guess, a success advocate to ourselves. So if your best friend turned around to you and said, oh, I feel so fat today, you're not going to turn around to her and go, you do actually look like a bit of a heifer. <laughs> you're not going to do that. But yes, we do that to ourselves all of the time. We will look at ourselves in the mirror and go, you are a fat heifer and you should lose weight. Self-kindness is when you go, you're doing the best that you can. You are trying. You just keep the head up and you drive the heels in and you keep going forward. So self-care, taking that in mind, when you guys have done something that um, is worthy of accomplishment, so any sort of success, an amazing way to mark that would be to run a hot bath, read a book for an hour, light a candle, cook a really elaborate meal. It doesn't have to be extravagant, but it has to be something to celebrate you, because at the end of the day, that's what this is about. You've accomplished something, it's time to celebrate that. So self-care is what I would do to celebrate, to acknowledge and to take stuff about. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you do a gratitude journal? No. Okay, a gratitude journal is another thing that you guys could um, use within your daily tasks. It is incredibly, if the goal is super, super big, again, super big for you, 
it's a really, really, really important thing to be able to do. A gratitude journal is basically going to bed every night and waking up first thing in the morning and making a list of three things that you are grateful for. Three things that happened that day that you appreciate, that makes you happy. You could express gratitude for that, for that thing that you've accomplished. This is a really, really great tool in order to increase optimism and positivity because it just, again, forces you to actually take stock of what's going on in life. We're all very good at honing in and focusing in all, on all of the negative stuff. We are tremendous at focusing in on the negative. But something as basic as a gratitude journal will just pull us back a little bit. If you guys didn't hit the PO that you wanted to in the gym, that's the only thing that you're going to focus on. But you might have missed the five kilo PR that you made in the bench the previous week. You might have missed the fact that you can actually touch the ground now. Um, you have got a full range, you, you've got full range of motion with your squat which you didn't have originally because your ankles were so messed up. Take stock <coughs> of these things, actually give yourself a chance to experience the success. Sometimes it's there, we just don't see it because we're so obsessed with everything that we do wrong. Um, okay. Okay. Right, I'm only going to spend a few minutes talking about this one, but the F word. <coughs> failure. I love this word. I am obsessed with failure. She loves failures. <laughs> <laughs> I am obsessed with this word. In psychology, there are two types of mindsets. There's a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Have you guys heard of this? Yeah. No, yes? Yeah, if there are any psychology people here and they want to jump in and, and support this in any way, please let me know. But a, but a fixed mindset or someone who possesses a fixed mindset is someone who believes that their intellectual abilities or their skills cannot be changed in any way. They are fixed. Their intelligence is fixed. A growth mindset, someone who possesses a growth mindset, believes that their intelligence, that their skills, that their personality can be changed, can be stretched, and can be developed. What mindset do you think that you guys will need to support you achieve your goals? A growth mindset. How many of you guys feel that you possess a fixed mindset? How many of you guys are afraid of failure? How many of you guys are afraid of what people will think of you, so you just don't even try? How many of you guys are just worried about being judged? So I'm just not gonna try. I'm actually just not gonna give it my all. Because what's the point? It's not like it's gonna 